cardiologist with Salu Care and SSM Salu Hospital. He joins us each and every Wednesday to give us uh, helpful hints on living healthy and living longer. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. We've talked about aspirin for heart attacks uh, over the last couple of months, but now there's a new study. Aspirin does what else now? Well, old study, new evaluation of okay. it. Aspirin, uh, again, shown to be associated with a decreased uh, incidence of cancer, especially colon cancer. Really? Mm. Yeah. Tell us about the study. So this is a study called the Nurses' Health Study where they um, looked at women, uh, several thousand, and they followed them for a long time. Some were on aspirin, some weren't. Uh, the initial intent of the study was to see whether aspirin itself could prevent an initial heart attack or an initial stroke. Um, didn't do a very good job of either uh, if you didn't have higher risk factors for those. Uh, so that we still kind of put aspirin in a, in a category of if you're really at high risk for having a heart attack or a stroke or you've had one, then it's a good deal because uh, it'll prevent the second one. But incidentally, as they continue to follow these folks and they looked at what happened to them, uh, uh, a lot of decrease in colon cancer um, and, and other kinds of cancers as well. So breast cancer was the second most uh, uh, likely decrease in terms of incidence of cancers in taking aspirin. So we've seen this before in other studies, an association between uh, X, and in this time X is aspirin, and a decreased rates and incidence of cancer. Uh, and, and so it's very intriguing. Uh, and actually, I would say pretty cool, uh, because we have a quote-unquote drug that's relatively inexpensive that seems to have secondary benefits. And so you don't just take one thing for one thing. Uh, sometimes people who uh, are at higher risk for heart disease who try to take aspirin to prevent some bad things from happening also get a secondary good benefit, and, and that, that's that's great news. Are what? they talking about a daily dose? Yeah, a daily dose of a baby aspirin. Oh. What, what is aspirin? Acetylsalicylic acid, of course. technically. <laughs> of course, everybody knew that. <laughs> Just rolls off your tongue. <laughs> so what it does is, uh, from a, from a heart standpoint, I mean, why it works from a heart standpoint is that it decreases the stickiness of these things circulating in your bloodstream called platelets. And so when platelets can't stick together, you can't form blood clots, and those blood clots potentially cause heart attacks and strokes. And so that's that connection. Hmm. Uh, the harder connection that I don't think I can answer is, well, how does it potentially prevent cancer? Yeah. Uh, can't necessarily tell you that. It does have some anti-inflammatory effects uh, in, in how it works, and so that might be a, a possible mechanism. Um, but a very intriguing concept. Now, aspirin, you know, it, it's over the counter, and, and anybody can go and get it. They can you know, go to your local drugstore, your grocery store today, and pick up some. Uh, likelihood is most people listening have some in their medicine cabinet. Does it, still, does it still work on, for a headache? It still does work for a headache. Okay. I, I don't think it's one of those. I, I think this is one of those things that probably dates folks in terms of when you were born and what you take for a headache. Okay. The, mm. uh, the folks who were born uh, farther ago uh, likely are the ones that still take aspirin for headaches, and I think the people who were born more recently take other things. Okay. But uh, in terms of recommendation here, I, I still think it's important, though. So if it decreases the stickiness of platelets, it does also increase your risk for bleeding. So if you're mm. Stephen Piscotti and you got hit three times around one trip of the bases and you're on aspirin, you have serious potential bleeding issues. He just mm. got hit in the head, so that could uh, be resulting in a head bleed. Uh, I just used him as an example because right. you guys just talked about him. Sure. But uh, it does increase your risk of bleeding, so this isn't necessarily for everybody. We need to, uh, I think, make the recommendation that uh, it does have secondary benefits and potential cancer prevention uh, you should talk to your da doctor, and, and the question should be, should I be on an aspirin? Uh, is this something that's going to help me live longer, uh, be more free of things like cancer, heart attacks, and strokes? Uh, should I be? And, and ask that question. Uh, what about people with stomach issues, too? Yeah, so the stomach issues have always been there in terms of aspirin and uh, ibuprofen and naproxen and those types of medications. Those drugs do decrease the thickness of the lining of the stomach, are associated with ulcers and bleeding from those, and so we need to be careful from that standpoint. That falls under the category of bleeding risk that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So uh, careful, but 
uh, potential big benefits. How long has aspirin been around? It's been around a long time. Hasn't long it? time. Yeah. Long, long, long. I mean, long like a hundred years or something. No, no, no. Longer than that. The ancient oh. ancient Egyptians used uh, a form of aspirin uh, way, oh. way, way, way back before even you and I were born. Miguel. That is a long time. <laughs> if the Egyptians were using it. Uh, what what is aspirin again? Acetylsalicylic acid. Acetylsalicylic acid. acid. It just rolls. It's actually, once you get it, you got it. <laughs> you can say it a few times at once. <laughs> once you get it, you got it. Use it four more times this morning in the broadcast. It'll be great. Uh, Dr. Michael Lim, cardiologist with Slew Care and SSM Health Sioux Hospital. Good stuff today. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you. Yeah. You guys take care.